stop being such a wimp. The TV talk show host incites a murder. What happened that night is all here in black and white. Now Shannon must defend a man he despises. You breed hatred. They can't lay a glove on me. I'm the king of late night television. All for a principle he believes in. If you don't listen to what I say, you may find yourself in prison. An exceptional show, says USA Today. And the Boston Globe calls it the coolest show on TV. Words, Shannon, words. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Brady. Now, Shannon Steele. I thought I was a big shot. Big money, big house, big car. I thought I held all the cards. I thought I could pick the winner every time. I thought I could smell it. But the whole thing was built on garbage. I treated my wife badly, and I knew it, and I didn't stop. One day, she walked. She took my daughter with her. I started gambling big time. Crazy stuff. Long shot stuff. I turned into the kind of man I'd grown up hating, taking the big bucks and being made a partner wouldn't enough to buy that off. I'm just kind of starting from scratch again, trying to keep things low pressure. tired of being lied to I'm speaking to you the guy who got laid off from the auto plant because his greed head boss didn't see it coming the guy who won't leave his home at night for a quart of milk because he lives in a war zone of gang paybacks and crack deals gone bad I am speaking to all of you who sit in your rooms at night wondering what went wrong with this world that's why we're here I'm Turner Bryce and this is voice of the people the only show where the average guy gets to tell it like it is. Tonight, our remote camera is at the corner of 12th and Maple. More power to you. More power to you, because God knows you don't have any now, that's for sure. Who was it that said they can only own you if they scare you? I did. And nobody scares me. So who agrees with me? Talk to me, Joe. Yeah. Well, you're right, Bryce. America's in a toilet. And good working people, you know, people like us, who built this country, we ain't got nothing. You've got less than nothing. Ever thought about why that is, Joe? Because, my hard-working friend, this isn't America anymore. No. It's owned by Japanese investors and Arab oil sheiks. Yeah, we... I can't buy a house. We can't buy a house. But these damn foreigners, they come over, they, they buy a house. You haven't even scratched the surface. More than half the studios in Hollywood are owned by foreigners. So what's next? The Statue of Liberty? So what are we going to do about it, Joe? Well, there's not much we can do about it. Come on, man. Stop being such a wimp. Every one of us can do something. Is there anyone out there who's got some stones? Yeah, me. Oh, yeah? What's your name? Mooney. Vince Mooney. So talk to me, Vince. What you said about the Arabs. It's true, they own this whole country. Yeah, but it's not only the Arabs. But they're the worst. You've seen it, man. They're all over the place. They treat us like crap. They think they own us, and I'm sick of it. Well, let's face it. They do own us because they own the oil. And I'm telling you, Vince, as long as they own that, and we need that, then we've got a problem. Yeah. Everywhere I go, they're in my face. I keep thinking about what I'd like to do about it. Yeah. Keep thinking, Vince. I'm sure you'll come up with something. I will, Bryce. I will. You know, of all the bums on the tube, you're the only one with the guts to tell the truth about things. The truth's not hard to tell, Vince. All you gotta do is stop lying. Am I right? Right, man. Thanks. Turn to Bryce! Give him hell, Vince. Give him hell. 
There goes Vince, and he's angry. You ought to be too, because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see the problems we have in America. You know what's going to happen, folks? One day we're all going to wake up to discover that we don't own anything anymore. We bought the oil from them, and they used that money to buy our country. I think it's about time we all stop it before it's too late. Pardon me, camel jockey. Oh, you a few quarters. No, 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 no. No, you don't understand. What I am talking about is a rush order here. How long will it take? Two weeks? I am talking about a big order here, right? A stationery, envelopes, business cards. A thousand. Uh, no, 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 a uh, five thousand of each. And, and we want the best, most expensive paper. Credit references. These are the law offices of Mr. Jack Shannon. We'll pay in full upon receipt. Morning. Why are you buying things I can't afford? Well, is it A, because we really need this stuff, or B, because I am tired of writing your correspondence on shopping bags, or C, because we got a client, one who owns a TV station and really needs your help. Ted McCarthy. You're kidding. You know him? I represented him at Coleman and Weiss. Well, he, he needs to see you right away in his office. Now? Hope you ordered yourself some business cards, too. Excuse me. Jack Shannon's office. As long as they own it and we need it, these people can write their own ticket in this country. Yeah. Everywhere I go, they're in my face. I keep thinking about what I'd like to do about it. Yeah. Keep thinking, Vince. I'm sure you'll come up with something. You know, of all the bums on the tube, you're the only one with the guts to tell the truth about things. The truth's not hard to tell, Vince. All you gotta do is stop lying. Am I right? Right, man. Just out of curiosity, Bryce, what the hell were you thinking? Well, Ted, let me see. What was I thinking? Probably that I'm 40% of your commercial revenue. Probably that without me, you could go back to broadcasting B-movies and mail-order shopping for little old ladies. But mostly, I'm thinking you don't talk to me like that. Not now, not ever. Got it? Look, man, so the cops picked up a copy of my tape. So what? I've seen it before. Harassment means nothing. Your lawyer buddy here, what's your name? Shannon? <laughs> Shannon. Yeah, okay. He knows I'm not liable, right? That's for a judge to decide. <laughs> Where'd you find this guy, Ted? Lawyers are us? I assume you've heard of a little document known as the Bill of Rights, First Amendment? Ring a bell? Uh, yeah, yeah, I heard of it. But uh, the situation you've created here isn't necessarily protected by freedom of speech. Not with a DA trying to earn herself a big reputation. Not with a minority member of her electorate languishing in a coma. God. Let me explain something to you. They can't lay a glove on me. I'm the king of late night television. Huh, the way I heard it, you reach slightly more people than a test pattern. Even a low-rent lawyer like you knows they're not going to go after me for something like this. We live in America, Shannon. Ted, you want to lose sleep over this? That's up to you. Me? I got work to do.
charming. <sighs> Let me begin with a gigantic apology. He's obnoxious, he's a pain, but he is 40% of our ad revenues right now. And perverse as it sounds, he speaks to a lot of Americans. He spoke to a pretty dangerous one last night. I should never bought this damn station. Real estate goes belly up, I figure. Here, it's a terrific little growth industry. Cable TV. <laughs> it's funny. You almost never insult half the urban population of a major city when you're in real estate. Or put a guy in the hospital. Look, Chad, am I responsible? Is, is the station responsible? I mean, this is a First Amendment question, and that's important to you, isn't it? Yeah. McCarthy! Do you have a warrant? I got a right to an attorney, and there he is! You're his lawyer? Not exactly. Hey, come on, man, I need you! No one can touch you. You're the king of late night television. Shannon! Damn it, McCarthy, don't you? For old time's sake, we were pretty close when you were with Coleman and Weiss. I helped you batter the zoning commission into breaking a freeze on high rises. Is that was your idea of close? All right, all right. But, but come on, Jack, even he has rights. You have to be kidding me. Incitement, conspiracy, causing a violent felony? <laughs> Shannon, you're coming up in the world. From the poor and downtrodden to a sleazy media shark. My, my, what well, some people won't do for money. Julia, over 150,000 people saw that show. Only one nut decided to beat somebody up. One nut incited by Turner Bryce, a known Arab baiter. Vince Mooney went straight from that show to the convenience store and beat a man half to death. Bryce inspired, enraged, and encouraged him. Is this how Mooney tells it? <laughs> Mooney is what we like to call a de-articulated individual. <laughs> but that is what happened. Now, Mooney beat the guy up. Bryce didn't. Mooney should pay. Bryce has a right to speak his demented mind, you know that. Do I? Should we tell that to the Arab gentleman fighting for his life in the hospital? Ms. Wells, can you tell us something more about the victim? Sure. Mr. Hassan and his wife came to this country five years ago. They scrimped and saved so they could have their own store in the city of brotherly love. You want to know where he was supposed to be this morning? The federal building. He was supposed to be sworn in as an American citizen. Could you call well, Ben Rose? Ladies, I'll have a full press conference in an hour. I'll give you all the details then. Thanks for your time. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Very touching. Little media rehearsal. <laughs> so, for a little publicity, you're going to step on the First Amendment. Mr. Hassan has a security camera in his store. What happened that night is all here in black and white. Tell you what, take a look, then come and lecture me about the First Amendment. Lucy, the case will be over before we know it. Mr. Hassan's regained consciousness. When he's feeling better, I'll go down to the hospital and see if I can find a way to settle this. Jack! I heard your name on the radio. Turner Bryce, that's a really big case. No, that's a big problem. So... What do you think of Bryce? Might as well ask me what I think of yellow fever. What are you doing? I'm writing a story on him for the school paper. This is amazing. I've got the best source in town. Wrong. Wrong. Dad, I'm your daughter. <sighs> Another reporter. No! I've got a client who gets in trouble every time he opens his mouth, Neela, so no press, not even in a high school newspaper. Why aren't you in school? This is school work. Whether you help me or not, I'm gonna do a story on this putz. Ooh, sounds like one for the pot. That's not a swear word.
If you won't talk to me, will you at least introduce me to Bryce? No. School. No, he is not it. No, no, we have no comment. That reporter, he wanted to know how you feel about Mr. Hassan's passing. He had complications and died a few minutes ago. silver-tongued son of a bitch. An innocent man is dead, and you are looking at incitement to murder. Words, Shannon, words! You just said in court, words don't kill people. I'm not responsible for what happened to some Arab. He was Syrian. He was not some Arab. He had a wife and a son. He was a human you being. You know died what I meant. Let's get a couple things straight, Bryce. I don't like you, and I don't like what you do on the air, number one. Number two, if you don't listen to what I say, you may find yourself in prison, where you may end up dead or worse. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Good. Communication is so important. They said my lawyer was here. Who the hell are you? My name's Shannon. I'm Turner Bryce's attorney. My lawyer said I shouldn't talk to no one. Well, Turner was concerned. He sent me to see how you were. No kidding? He should have come himself. I'd give anything to meet him in person. <laughs> Tell him I'm sorry this is coming down on him, too. Well, Turner understands. Yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah, he is. Have a seat. Must have been some wild scene in the courtroom today, huh? <laughs> you heard about that, huh? Yeah. This buddy of mine, a guy I used to work with, was there. I just called him. He told me. What's his name? Wayne. Wayne? What's Wayne's last name? Why? Well, if he's a fan of Turner's, too, he might want to meet him. We could probably arrange it. What's his number? What do you really want? I just want to learn a little bit about you so we can help turn it together. Get out of here. <laughs> Come on, Vince. What's Wayne's last name? You can tell me. You tell Bryce. I'll talk to him anytime because he's my kind of people, but you. You don't mess with me. Because I'm a guy who never forgets. Get it? Guard, this bum don't belong in here. on a long range program of mental and uh, physical <laughs> conditioning. Oh, oh. This is a list of the last four places Mooney worked. This guy, Wayne, he made work with one of them. Shannon, what are you trying to prove? I gotta find somebody who knows Mooney. 
Help me prove that he was already prejudiced against the Arabs. Maybe he didn't need Bryce's help to pick on Mr. Hassan. You know, it's irksome that you're going to be representing this slime. Yeah, I know. You watch him, but you hate him. I couldn't care less about him one way or another. This is showbiz. But he is a guts. Are you talking to my daughter? Ted, we've got a problem, Teddy. The DA is going after a restraining order to take Bryce off the air until after the trial. You can't let her do that. Now, you know I think Bryce is despicable, but I have a station to run. <laughs> That's what it's all about, isn't it? Ratings. You're damn right, it is about ratings. Jack, I don't make the rules, but like it or not, I'm running a business here. It's your business I'm talking about, Teddy. The restraining order will convince a jury that what Bryce says on your station puts people in imminent danger of physical harm. It could kill the case before we ever go to trial, and it could hurt you personally. Me? Bryce's conviction could open you up to a nasty lawsuit from the relatives. You may lose everything. You got it? You're my lawyer. You do something. Teddy! This is on the record, Lynn. Hitler could have been stopped before anybody died. If the German people had enforced their own laws. That's what I plan to do, enforce the law. Call me anytime. Great, thanks. Are you uh, Jack Shannon? No. Hitler. Nice analogy, Julia. What's that make you, Goebbels? <laughs> this isn't propaganda, Jack. This is fact. Your man's dangerous, and a restraining order is going to prove it. Or blow your whole case. <laughs> nice try. You know, you can try this Hitler stuff with a jury, but judges have a funny habit of demanding facts. Such as? When the Detroit Pistons won the world championship, there was wild partying in the streets. Three people died. Should the Pistons be restrained from earning a living because of that? Irrelevant. The Pistons didn't tell anybody to riot. Your client incited Mooney to kill that man. Well, if words can incite, then you've just put my client's life in jeopardy by comparing him to Hitler in the press. Look, if and when my client is found guilty, that's when he should come off the air. You know what? Why don't we take it to a judge right now? It'd save us both a lot of time and aggravation. Come on, let's see what he says. I can wait. Let him stay on the air. If anything happens, it'll be on your head, Shannon. As you know, a man named Marwan Hassan died as a result of a tragic beating Monday night. I would like to express my profound regret at this incident, which I neither provoked nor encouraged, and make it clear that in no way do I advocate any act of violence. And if anyone wants to dispute me on that, I'll knock the crap out of them. Just kidding. All right, we're back in action. I'm Turner Bryce, the real Turner Bryce, and the show is Voice of the People. All right, who's angry out there? You're right about this world. It's fallen apart. You take a walk around this city and take a look at people's faces. I know. All you see is anger and pain. I don't blame that Mooney for beating the hell out of that guy. Stop tapping! Yeah. Bryce? Let's not get into that, man. I can't believe you apologized for letting somebody get punched out. Let's change the subject, okay? We're all getting bored with you, Bryce. got to you, man. I told you I can't get into that tonight, okay? You're just nothing but a punk. Don't go, man. Don't go. Listen. You're right. I'm not being honest with you. The truth is, I'd love to tell you what I'm really thinking. But there's a guy here who won't let me. His name's Jack Shannon, and he's supposed to be my lawyer. Now, Jack, since I can't have a talk with my decent friends out here, at least have the courtesy to tell them why. Come on, Jack, everyone's watching. Speak up. Let's go, Jack. Well, I guess he's got nothing to say. 
see the problem, Dane? Yeah. 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 yeah, I understand, man. Take care. Kill all lawyers! Yeah. Okay, on that right now, we're going to take a 30-second commercial break. But stick around, because when I come back, I'm taking off the gloves. Marshall? Camera one, back to your original position, please. Don't do this, Bryce. I go with my gut, and my gut tells me this is good TV. Yeah, my gut tells me you're going to jail. Get McCarthy down here now. And five, four, three. All right, we're back. Who has something really exciting to say? I do. Um, what's your name, sir? My name is Hamid. I was born in Syria, but now I'm an American citizen. The man who was beaten to death by your Mr. Mooney. Hey, buddy, he's not my Mr. Mooney. That man was my brother. I loved him, but you killed him. That's not true. All these crazy people here listen to you. They don't know what you are, but I do. Hey, mister, these are good people. I hope you're not thinking of doing anything drastic, like killing yourself or anything. This office is hard enough to clean as it is. What are you doing here? It's four in the morning. I saw the show. I, um, I tried calling you at home. Is this Mr. Hassan gonna be okay? Only because there were a couple of patrol cars in the area. No comment. Hey. It's not your fault. Wanna bet? I'm the one who talked the DA out of getting this creep off the air. First thing tomorrow morning, I'm gonna talk her back into a restraining order. Does McCarthy know this? No. But I'm doing it for his own good. Well, I'm no lawyer or anything, but isn't that illegal, working against your own client? Let him sue me. I know how you feel, Mrs. Hassan, but don't worry. When I get finished with Mr. Bryce, he won't be spreading his hatred anymore. Thank you both for coming down today. I know it's been hard. Jack! Julia, just on my way to your office. Let me introduce you. This is Mrs. Hassan, and this is her brother-in-law. I understand you met him last night, Hamid. This is... I know who he is. You, you're Mr. Bryce's lawyer. Yes, Mrs. Hassan, about your husband. I'm truly sorry. If you were sorry, you wouldn't be defending such a man. I understand how you feel. No, you can never know how I feel. Talib and Ruhul Bint. Good day, Miss Wells. Julia, about Bryce. You were right. Really? Yeah, I think in the light of last night's events, uh, the restraining order was a good idea. Forget it, Jack. I figure the more Bryce exercises his rights to free speech, the less I have to do to convict him. Have a nice day, Jack. <sighs> No, that's just the part I play. I'm actually a pretty nice guy. My audience, however, is seething, and I have to reflect their mood, their needs. It doesn't seem very honest, Mr. Bryce. Hey, kid, I'm probably the only really honest person on television. Uh, 
Just a few more quick questions, okay? No, no! No, I wouldn't have defended Hitler, but you guys had put him on TV! Pinheads. It's tough being so popular, I'll tell you. Well, it's not exactly you they're after. It's all about controversy. And I put that strong. She's too see, old to spank. Has an opinion, right or wrong? Hi, Dad. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Bryce, but I've got to go. You're welcome. I told you no interviews. It was fate. I was here. He was here. You wait outside. Spunky kid. Do we have an appointment? Come on, Shannon. I'm a performer. Sometimes I get carried away. And I'm really sorry that I lost my cool last night. That was wrong. There was no excuse for it. What, are you trying out a new act? A sincere Turner, Bryce? I am sincere. And from now on, I'm going to help you do your job. That's a promise. Watch me tomorrow night. Don't touch me! Hey! Get out of my space! Go! Come on, open up! It's me! Hey, somebody! Go! It's me! Me. Don't touch me! Hmm. Well, man. Right, all right. No. Muck bacon, slime, slinking scum! Get out of my face, yellow journal! Wilmer, what's up? You got something? It looks a lot shorter in person. <laughs> Wilmer, I found this fellow Wayne, surname Leeson. He's a junior executive in the commodities disposal industry. Commodities disposal industry? Hey, pal, I'm looking for Wayne Leeson. Wayne Leeson, your boss said he'd be on his truck. The guy with the fat down there, that's him. Thanks. Hey! Are you Leeson? Yeah, so much. We're friends of Miss Mooney's. Call me from jail. He said you guys might be snooping around here. Well, let me tell you something. Bitch is a buddy of mine, so I got nothing to say to you bums. So take a hike. Stick it up my alley. Wayne, a degree of civility would be appreciated here. You look like you've been chasing parked cars, puppy dog. Wilmer, it's a dead end. Let's go. Wilmer? Oh, for God's sake. Hey, you guys, this puppy dog's name is Wilmer. <laughs> Wilmer. I can't afford any more trouble here now. Let's go. This loser could have found in information that you may need. The information I can get if you let me engage him in a private negotiation. You mean if I let you beat it out of him? Well, let's just say it's the next step in my ongoing program for mental and physical conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be in the office if you need me. You got no damn right to do this. Hey, I told you to be nice. Now tell Mr. Shannon about your moronic friend, eh? So what? Okay, Mooney don't like Arabs. I don't like that kind either. What do you want me to say? Mooney's a foul mouth. If you ain't got something to bitch about him, make it up. You don't like a lot of people. Do you have trouble with Arabs before? That guy the other night was the only one I ever heard him talk about. So tell me about it, Wayne. What's there to tell? Okay, he called me up and he asked me to go with him to Bryce's show. I said I couldn't make it, and he said he had some scrap with an Arab and he wanted to talk to Bryce about it. So what? You saying he had trouble with Mr. Hassan that night before the show? He didn't say. I just figured it was this guy, Hassan. So what? Son, I'm the Jack Shannon. Do you remember me? Yes, I do. How are you uh, getting along? Badly, Mr. Shannon. Wherever we are, my son will grow up without his father. 
and I will grow all the long. Look, I know this is a rough time for you, but I need your help. The man who killed your husband. I think he was in this store earlier that night. I think he fought with your husband before he went to Bryce's show and then afterwards. He came back here? And what is it you want from me? I need your security videotape for the whole day and night. And if I give it to you and you are right, will it help your Mr. Bryce? Yeah. So why would I do that? Because if we silence Turner Bryce today, we'll be silencing ourselves tomorrow. The freedom to speak your own mind, isn't that one of the reasons you came to this country, you and your husband? My husband loved this country. I'm sure he would have agreed with you. I'm not sure if I do or not. No luck, huh? So far, all the action has been cigarettes and beer with bean dip and chips running neck and neck for a distant third. Shannon, I'm getting a wonderful idea for a situation comedy. Wilbur must be beat. He's getting caught up in the plot. If this doesn't pan out, will Bryce have to go to jail? Probably. Gee, that's too bad. Sorry, Shannon. Lots of urban oblivion, but no Vince Mooney. Hello? Hello? Dad, turn on your TV. Neela, what time is it? Turn on Bryce's show. You're not gonna believe this. You should be in bed. Take a little break, but don't touch that dial. Because on the last segment of the show, I'm going to be interviewing a very special guest. A man currently charged with murder, Vince Mooney. So, Vince, welcome to Voice of the People. It's good to have you here. I think it's about time we met in person, huh? Yeah, thanks. Let's get right down to it, Vince. I'm getting McCarthy down here. Left messages everywhere. Can't find me. Pull the plug. Not with that word from Mr. McCarthy. I want you to tell us what happened. Will you do that? I will for you, Mr. Bryce. You helped me a lot. You went my bail. I owe you. That's unimportant. Tell us what happened between you and Mr. Hassan, okay? I clipped him a couple of times. I didn't mean for him to die. Actually, it was more than a couple of times, wasn't it, Vince? Let's try another tack. You got a girlfriend? No. Ooh, big surprise there. So, who do you talk to, Vince? About what? About what you feel. What do you feel? About what? About Arabs, for starters. You did beat one to death just the other night, didn't you, Vince? What is this bullshit bleep that? Do they uh, get under your skin? They smell bad? <laughs> do they all look alike? Is that the problem? Hey, you said you were going to make me look good. Or is it just that load of rage you carry inside you, Vince? No girl, no job, no future. When you go home to your little room at night, do you feel like you're lying in hell, Vince? Show me where the plug is. I'll pull it myself. Is that your Jones? Is that how you get off, man? When you're done, I'll talk. I don't let animals talk on my show, Vince. Get this. Get this! I did what I did because you told me to. I did not! You did too! You told me these people were taking over my country. You told me it was time to stop sucking it up, time to start scratching back. You bailed me out of jail saying you want to help me. Well, what you really want to do is save your own neck. All right, cut it, cut it, cut it! Not without Mr. McCarthy, I don't. Bryce! You think I'm going to beat you up on your show? You think we're all a bunch of dumb bohunks, don't you? You got a lot to learn about your fans. Don't walk away from me, you moron. We'll meet again. Don't worry about it. I'm a guy who never forgets. That goes for you too, lawyer. I 
thought I could nail him. Good thinking. So are you on the case or off? Okay, stomp your hoof once for yes, twice for no. Was that wild last night? Hi, Dad. Hi, Lucy. I finished my story. We read it? You know, I really think I captured Bryce's inner mo Or you can put it in your drawer and take it out sometime next year when you're in a better mood. Come on, I want to see it. Hey, this is not bad. Bryce's lawyer, the fiery Jack Shannon, stands alone but firm in his defense of our First Amendment. The real villain in this case is the mean-eyed killer, Vince Mooney, a man who holds a perpetual grudge. What's editorializing? What? You can't say he's a man who holds a grudge. It's editorializing. No, it's not. I got it from the show last night. He said to Bryce, and I quote, don't worry. I'm a guy who never forgets. You're right. Yeah, she's good. He said the same thing to me. I'd believe him, Dad. I do. Here are the tapes, Mr. Shannon. Thank you, Mrs. Hassan. Hello. Thank you for waiting. My husband was a very orderly man, Mr. Shannon. Thanks. Each tape is numbered and dated from the 3rd to the 17th. Mrs. Hassan, what are you doing here? Uh, Hamid, Mr. Shannon thinks that Marwan may have had trouble with that man Mooney days before he killed him. That's ridiculous. Get out. I'm just trying to find out the truth. By badgering my brother's widow. Your being here profanes his memory. Now get out! Stop I... it, Hamid! If what Mr. Shannon is doing will lead to the truth, then I want to help him. Have you lost your mind? My brother is dead. This man doesn't care about him. Mrs. Hassan, there's a tape missing from the box. Are you sure? November 10th. It doesn't matter. Well, he's right. Uh, my husband wasn't even in the store that day. November the 10th was my son's birthday. Marwan was home with us. So the store was closed on that day? No, Hamid was here. What's wrong, Hamid? Mooney was here that day, wasn't he? I don't understand. Mooney's the kind of man who holds a grudge. The kind of bigot who thinks all Arabs look alike. Am I right, Mr. Hassan? Mooney was here on the 10th. You had a fight with him, didn't you? Then he came back here four days later and attacked your brother because he thought he was you. Is that true? I, I took the tape to see if it was the same man. He, he tried to buy beer, but he didn't have enough money. I wouldn't let him take it. When he left, he was angry. I couldn't come forward. I just couldn't. <laughs> Don't you see? When Mooney came back, he was looking for me, not Marwan. I am the one who should be dead. <laughs> you couldn't have known. charges against Turner Bryce have been dropped. I felt all along that the charges were an infringement on Mr. Bryce's First Amendment rights. You can't silence a man for speaking his mind, not in this great country. As for Vince Mooney, we'll be asking for the death penalty. Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't have done it without your support. So when are they going to publish your story? As soon as I rewrite the ending. Shannon! Here comes your ending. Hey, you're not going to believe this, but McCarthy fired me. The guy's crazy. My ratings are going through the roof, and he fires me? You're kidding. You were brilliant. Be brilliant again and make him change his mind. 
Oh, I'm the guy who talked him into firing you. What? Yeah, he didn't like it, but I convinced him. It was the right thing to do. You hypocrite. You talk about my freedom, about my right to speak, and how no one can silence me, but the truth is, you don't give a damn about the First Amendment. You don't get it, Bryce. This isn't about the First Amendment anymore. <laughs> this is about this lousy taste I get in my mouth every time I see you coming. You're a bottom feeder, Bryce. You breed hatred. You feed on ignorance. You read the riot act to people about issues you don't give a damn about. The only thing you care about is the size of your mouth and the sound of your voice. You dumb mick. <laughs> You really think I'm finished? You really think you can silence me? Nah, you'll be back on the air again. Some people seem to need you, not that I'll ever understand why. I just hope nobody else has to die for it. Now get out of my office! Here's a quote for your story, kid. Your father's a jerk. Mr. Bryce? You're a putz. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. But I think this one was worth it. Uh, this one's on the house. I'm Tom Brokaw. The largest case of mercury poisoning in the country, an accident that never should have happened. Find out why on Vital Signs, a daily difference report tomorrow on NBC Nightly News. And tomorrow night, Clint Black, Kathy Matea, and George Strait host the 26th Annual Academy of Country Music Awards. Then, Sunday night, it could happen to any family. NBC presents a world premiere event based on the true story, Switched at Birth, beginning Sunday night.